today I'm going to be talking about from platforms to ecosystems um, to focus specifically on away from single platforms to focus on how media ecosystems expand online. And I'm going to be using one case study, um, which is this Japanese music fandom called uh, Vocaloido. Uh, this is Vocaloid uh, Gensho, which is the Vocaloid phenomenon. And I'll show this quick video um, so you can get a sense of what this phenomenon is actually comprised of. So you might recognize this as Hatsune Miku, who is uh, this teal-haired virtual singer. And basically, she's a proprietary voice synthesizer software. You can buy her for 150 bucks. But the interesting thing is that her entire fandom is completely open source. You can call it like an open source culture. And it's become extremely large in Japan. And it's created both online phenomena, but also offline. So there are many, many events all around the country where people dress up and sell vocaloid goods. And they even have virtual uh, concerts as well, uh, one of which actually premiered in LA. It got so popular, in fact, that it even was featured in a Playboy centerfold in Japan with one of the lead uh, fashion, uh, fashion models um, last year, I believe. Um, and so Vocaloid is extremely big, and it really began online. Um, in fact, on this website, Niku Nipodogo, which is, in a sense, uh, the kind of like the Japanese YouTube. Um, and fans will use the software to create hundreds and dozens and thousands of videos and put them up online for free. And so fans basically enter into this open source culture by consuming, I think up to 250,000 songs were made with this one software, and they share it online for free, and then people will go out and buy songs and it has expanded across many, many platforms, not just on Niki Niku Doga. So for example, this is website Pia Pro, where fans can upload art, they can upload lyrics, upload other songs as well, and it's all kept track of through this uh, commenting system and attribution system. And there's even, like the GPL and Creative Commons license, this Pia Pro character license, meaning that people can use Hatsune Miku across many, many different ways with two themes, derivative works, and uh, non-commercial content. Uh, Karen Chi is another platform that emerged from this phenomenon, which basically revolutionized how people would license Vocaloid music. And it became so popular that it actually redefined how music is licensed in karaoke rooms in Japan. This is actually another piece of software that was created called Miku Miku Dance, <laughs> which you can animate the characters and put them to video. <laughs> so basically, it helps fans create music videos for the songs that they upload online. What's that called again? It's Miku Miku Dance. It's actually the number one used 3D software in Japan right now, and it's free. Um, YouTube is actually another interesting phenomenon, too, because all these songs and videos that are uploaded to Miku Miku Doga are re uploaded to YouTube. So, for instance, there are many, many kind of alternative communities that emerge via localized or Japanese on YouTube that are not actually the original ones. And here you can see all that occurring in this one person who speaks English right in the middle. Um, and so this is one really interesting piece. I don't think it's full of English. Oh, it's Well, anyway, so uh, 
many of these songs are re-uploaded, as you can see from this right slide here. One song is re-uploaded over and over and over. And if you know Young Cat, Young Cat was actually one song that was derived from using Hustle Music software. And of course, this one video has been viewed over 60 million times on YouTube. And one thing that I'm really interested in is how fans can appropriate this open source culture into their own lives. So this is one demo of Dan actually doing this projection in his own home using uh, open source software and a very uh, cheap mesh projector. So that is Vocaloid. Bye.